Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman from LearnGPR.com. I am your GPR professor, and I'm coming at you today answering a question we got from one of you, one of the audience, who wanted to know what a Hilbert transform is. A Hilbert transform is a higher order uh, post-processing step that gives you what's called an envelope of amplitudes. <coughs> oh, yeah, that's envelope, that's not envelope of amplitudes, okay? Envelope of amplitudes. So what does that mean? It means it takes the positives and negatives, right, from a response, from a reflection response, and collapses them into a total signal that shows the entire amplitude of that event. So in order to understand that, uh, and this isn't used commonly uh, by, I would say, the majority of users, uh, it's used by some folks, um, and certainly it's not used on every single project. It's used for specific reasons. But here's what I mean. This is a trace, okay? A trace is a one-dimensional view, right? <clears throat> one-dimensional view of the subsurface where your antenna is, right? So this is your you know, transmitter slash receiver, okay? Transmitter receiver produces a signal and basically this, then, is time. Time, going down. This, right, is the ground surface, okay? What happens here, and really, you know, we could say that, okay, that's the ground surface, okay, that's the ground surface. That means that this response right here is the reflection event off of the ground. The signal comes out of the antenna, hits the ground, and goes back to the receiver. It creates a reflection response. When it does this, it basically creates a three-banded reflection event. It could be negative, positive, negative, or the reverse. It could be positive, negative, positive. In this case, I'm saying that it was negative, positive, negative. So when the signal slowed down, when the wave slowed down, it created a negative, positive, negative. In this circumstance, why do we know it slowed down? The wave moves fastest in air compared to anything else. So the second it enters the ground, it's slowing down under all circumstances. There is no circumstance that the wave comes from the air into the ground and speeds up. It doesn't happen. It has to slow down. So this is our slow down signature, negative, positive, negative for this example. So then what we have here is a reverse, right? So we have a positive, negative, positive. The amplitude's a little bit less. Uh, and so what might be going on here is, let's say, um, a void, okay? So this could be a void. And the reason that it's a void, or that I'm saying that, is that it reversed, right? It reversed. So if it slowed down going into the ground, it sped up going into a void, right? Into some void space filled with air. So you get a reversal. Point is, you get positive, negative, positive. Finally, down here, we have the same signal that we had for the ground surface. So we might want to say that this is, you know, the, could be the, whoop, sorry about that. Got to hold on to it better. Okay, this might be the water table. You with me? Slow down, speed up, slow down. Right? Primarily positive, primarily positive, but primarily negative. So, I went through all that so I can tell you what the Hibbert transform is, okay? What's a Hibbert transform? Well, you might be looking at this and saying to yourself, well, <clears throat> I understand that there are positives and negatives to each response, but my question is, which one was the greatest response? Which one of these was the greatest response? So, by going into a Hibbert transform, right, so this is the transform, we'll go Hibbert transform, it creates something that looks like this instead. It creates absolute values. Values. Okay. Absolute values for all of your responses. It creates absolute values for all of your responses. So now, right, it, cre it took the negatives, right, took the, this piece, it took this piece, and it took this piece, 
put the entire amplitude of all three bands together into a single event. That's the envelope. It took all of it, okay? It took all of it. It did the same thing for the void, okay? It took this piece right here, it took this piece right here, and took this, and transformed that into a single response. Same thing for the water table, okay? Took all this, took all this, and took all this, and created this response. This is a transformed trace. Absolute total, absolute values of total amplitudes reflected. Why is this helpful? The reason it can be helpful is to make relative comparisons between reflection events. So obviously as you go down in time, meaning you're going down in depth, you are going to get signal attenuation from conductivity. But aside from that, you will get more or less signal reflected off of interfaces or targets that are greater or less different from each other. Right? The greater the difference, the more energy is going to be reflected. The less of the difference, the less energy is going to be reflected. What this helps you do is make relative comparisons between these events. Okay? So, in this case, you get a bigger reflection off of the ground surface. That's understandable. You would anticipate getting equally as large of a reflection going from the same ground surface into a void. But there actually is less. Why is there less? Because of the attenuation. So we would expect these to be pretty similar. There is some attenuation, so this amplitude, right, is not as, uh, uh, you know, is not as, as, as dramatic for this void as it was for the, for the ground surface. By the time it gets down to this water table, it's, uh, right, it's, very suppressed. The signal is very suppressed, and this is probably due to conductivity. But nonetheless, is you can make you know inferences about reflection events based on this transformed data. Okay, that's what a Hibbert transform is, or at least I'll say has traditionally been. So to kind of wrap this up, I'll bring you to the to, to recent history, and when I say recent, I mean the last couple months is. <sighs> in one software package, right? So the problem with this is it goes to absolute values, which means you lose information. You get information because you get absolute total amplitudes. Problem is you lose information. And what do you lose information on? You lose information on polarity, right? Because looking at this, you have no idea if it's speeding up or slowing down. You lose that information. Question was from somebody uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a Facebook group, is can we do this, but have an algorithm auto-detect which polarity it is, and then produce the transformed data based exclusively on those polarities, absolute values, positive or negative. Right? So that is really what would be considered absolute, positive or negative, total amplitudes, you know, uh, enveloped. And yes, somebody did that. So there's one that I know of, one software package is called GPR slice. Uh, and so somebody asked this question, and basically Dean Goodman, the guy who wrote the software, turned around, I don't know, a week or two later, and said, oh, we just added this function. Incredible, incredible thing. This is not, a, a, this is maybe a little plug for them, but it's just because he, he's a fantastic, excellent, excellent customer service, um, and, uh, and just a great software package. So, um, so this is what he did. Somebody, and I think it was Reed over on the West Coast, so good job, Reed, for pushing Dean. What he did was he said, can you make this Hibbert transform, recognize the polarities, and spit it out as a total envelope, but with the polarity retained? And that's what Dean did. So now you're going from this to this one, right? Okay? Where you get the envelope of the signal... Right? Envelope of the signal. So no, no more positive, negative, positives for a single reflection. It's a single total amplitude. So you get the benefit of being able to compare relative reflection events, but you also don't lose the information on polarity. So now you get, in this case, right, you get positive. In this case, you get negative. And in this case, you get positive. And so you get the Hibbert transform, but you retain the polarity information. 
incredible, incredible benefit, huge, helpful benefit for being able to retain this. Um, so that's what the HIPAA transform is. It takes the envelope of all of this and produces something that looks like this, right? So it's a single response for the total amplitude. Now, at least within GPR Slice, it will retain the polarity as well. So that's how it works. That's what it is, uh, and that's really when you would, would when you would use it is uh, uh, when you want to get those absolute values of total amplitude reflections in order to understand you know kind of what's what's going on. Hope this was helpful. If you ever wondered you know what a, a Hibbert transform was, then you can thank you know the audience. You guys can thank yourselves for asking great questions. If you find somebody else that might be able to use this, please share it around. Please subscribe to the Learn GPR YouTube channel. I'm trying to grow the community here. And in the comments below, put some other processing step that you've always wondered about. Something that kind of doesn't you know, make sense to you right now. I'm glad to make a video for you. Um, maybe it's something else. Maybe it's migration. Maybe it's deconvolution. Whatever it is, if there's a processing step that you want to learn more about, put it in the comments below and I'll try to address it in a future video. Head over to learngpr.com, put your name and email address in, and you'll get access to our free introductory training course, and we will send you these videos to your inbox every single week. So thanks so much for watching. Good luck.